going to tell you about a little story about me. I was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 17. Fortunately, the doctor said that it was the good kind of cancer with a great long-term prognosis and few invasive procedures. Ever since then, I've had multiple surgeries and radiotherapy sessions, as well as three recurrence cases where um, the cancer would reappear um, in various parts of my body. The most recent case was in the winter of 2019, uh, which continued on to the year of 2020, which, as we all know, was when the COVID-19 pandemic began. And I guess one could say that I was fortunate because I was able to receive medical treatment and um, I was also uh, pretty healthy and I'm now uh, relatively healthy. But as I think back to those years, every time I think back to the days when my body was deteriorating and the world was in hysterics over the pandemic, I can also vividly remember the stress and anxiety that I felt that I had experienced. And it turns out I was not alone. So the World Health Organization stated that the COVID-19 pandemic triggers 25% increase in prevalence of anxiety and depression worldwide during the COVID-19 lockdown. So uh, there were several stress factors, which included social isolation uh, and also loneliness, fear of infection, and also fear of the potential death of oneself and, the, and your loved ones. And that's true, those were the things that I had also experienced myself during the pandemic. Um, furthermore, uh, the World Health Organization also reported that individuals with pre-existing medical conditions were also more prone to uh, stress and anxiety during the pandemic. And yeah, I guess, I felt better knowing that I wasn't alone. In addition to that, outside the context of the pandemic and disease, our day-to-day -day life is also often so filled with activities that we often forget to breathe. It can be really overwhelming sometimes. We all do daily chores, we commute, we work, some of us also study and go to school, and even leisure activities such as traveling trips require cognitive resources such as budgeting and planning. And yeah, it can be really overwhelming sometimes. And maybe we don't realize that we're accumulating stress in our body. And so in the midst of my anxiety and depression, I scoured through numerous research papers because I happen to be a researcher myself. And this is in order to find out uh, what I can do to help me heal. And so this is, oh, sorry. And so this is what I did. Uh, a whole lot of walking. Uh, some, I took some of these uh, just outside of my home, not very far from home. And, yeah, just did a lot of walking. And to this day, I make sure to just go out into nature and walk whenever I feel overwhelmed or whenever I feel stressed. And so let me tell you about the healing power of nature. Because as you can see, they're all outside and they're all green or blue. So oh, I took this one as well lovely seaside. So research says that nature makes you happy. Nature connectedness predicts the extent of positive emotions experienced during the COVID-19 lockdown, the researchers say. And this basically means that the richer and more diverse uh, the natural environment is, the happier one becomes. And also, nature doesn't judge you. And 
these researchers, they interviewed 24 young adults, ages 17 to 24, nine of whom experienced mental health issues throughout their lives. And these young people reported that being in nature provided them with a stronger sense of self, greater connection to nature, and also finds that nature is accepting and relational. And these next researchers, they wanted to find out the minimum time dose in nature that, that would be good for mental health. And they found that just 10 minutes of sitting or walking in diverse natural settings has a significant positive impact on mental well-being. And they did this using meta-analysis, so they compiled over 150 studies on uh, connecting to nature. And so just 10 minutes of sitting or walking in nature can be beneficial for you. And so now we know that when you're more connected to nature, you also have better well-being. And these researchers found that not only that, uh, a certain aspect of well-being that's, pers that's called personal growth was also greatly increased. And so, you might be thinking that it's easy, right? Just go out into your local park and just walk. And you might be correct if you think that way. Um, but it would be even better if we can incorporate some mindfulness into it. Now, for those who aren't aware of what mindfulness is, mindfulness is the state of being present in the moment, of being aware of oneself, but also the surroundings. And so mindful walking is the act of ev using every sensory modality that you have to enhance the experience of your walk. So I created an acronym to make myself remember what to do during my uh, nature walk sessions. And it's called VERT. For those who know French, that means green. And so V stands for visually stimulating spaces. We need to find visually stimulating spaces that are rich in flora and also uh, just very diverse green ecosystems in order, you, in order for you to be able to get as much benefit as you can from nature. And E stands for engaging all senses. And this means using every sensory modality. So that's feeling, that's hearing, that's listening, that's seeing even. And so it means that when you're going on a nature walk, you engage all of your senses, you feel the air against your skin, you see the leaves swaying in the wind, you hear the songs of the birds. So all of your senses. And then just take some time during your walk to just sit down somewhere on the ground, on the bench, to release deep mindful breaths. And releasing deep mindful breaths just require closing your eyes and focusing on the air filling the spaces in your lungs. It can be imagining your stomach as a balloon, inflating as you inhale, and, ex and deflating when you exhale. So mindful breaths, very simple, just take some time. And then thinking, contemplating, and reflecting during and after your walk thinking, contemplating, and reflecting on all of your experiences during your nature walk. So, uh, we all know that nature walk is beneficial. And we also know that it's important to find um, stimulating spaces that can be rejuvenating and that can provide you solace and solitude. And so, uh, some research have found that green and blue spaces, green meaning forests, for example, and blue meaning seaside or beaches, for instance, are much more restorative than urban green spaces. So if you have the time, go out to the seaside and walk there, or find a forest somewhere and just walk safe forest. And another research found that 
50-minute walk on a forest path uh, was found to reduce stress and anxiety much more significantly than a 15-minute walk down a busy road or a 15-minute walk just doing daily activities. And lastly, this research found that seeing and hearing birds uh, can have lasting improvements in one's well-being. So the presence of birds is inherently calming, and it's important to find a space that can provide you with their songs. And so this is just a little something to ponder on before we end this talk. Uh, Marie Curie used to say that all my life through, the new sights of nature made me rejoice like a child. And I just want you to know that if nature can do this to Marie Curie, then it can definitely do the same for you. And so the next time you feel overwhelmed or stressed, remember to just go out, find a green space, and just walk. Do some mindful walking. Thank you.